Hello. Hello, good evening. Hello, everybody. Hello. Thank you for coming. So, the DG will say a few words to start off with. And after that, we'll be happy to take questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, I know it's a Sunday evening, so not, not the, ALD, uh, the ideal time of a day or of a week. But I'm, I'm grateful that, that you are here. So, uh, we are back from what I believe was a constructive a trip, very short but very constructive trip, which I believe. Um, helps um, keeping the process in a, in a, a good direction and will hopefully bring us closer to solve uh, some of the important issues that we still have to, uh, to solve. Uh, I, I would say that my, my first um, uh, concern when traveling there was that we had a major, a major communication breakdown with Iran, which of course is something we cannot afford, having so many important issues that we need to solve. And I think that was, uh, that was solved, but perhaps through your questions we can get some more uh, interesting aspects uh, on it. But uh, um, I wanted to start by, by saying that and by, by thanking you, and I'm at your disposal for your more specific questions if you, if you do have them. If you, if you could please identify yourself. Yes, Francois. Francois Murphy from Reuters. Um, DG, I have two questions to start off with. One um, on continuity of knowledge. Your monitoring equipment has never gone more than three months without being serviced. So you're so, we're sort of in a kind of a no man's land right now in terms of yes. um, how, how much of the memory yes. on a lot of these devices has yes. been used up. So how confident are you that continuity of knowledge has been maintained before you go and um, service, service this equipment? Um, and then secondly, on the other main issue, uh, the safeguards, uh, the open questions about these um, uranium yes. particles, et cetera. Um, what's in the joint statement is, is very vague. So yes. have you, has Iran committed to anything more specific than, than that with you? Or is this just another vague promise to discuss things with you because we had one of those recently from Iran, and as you've said yourself, that basically got you nowhere? Yes. Well, thank you very much for the question. On the first one, uh, you may have seen in my reports that I said that the situation was with regards to the verification and monitoring equipment in Iran and because of it, their, their technical uh, capacity and, 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 and specifications, we were coming to a point where we need immediate rectification of the situation. And I think today's agreement gets us just that. This is going to be rectified, and uh, we are going to be able, uh, when we complete the servicing of the equipment that we need to do, uh, we will be able to keep the uh, information needed to uh, maintain continuity of knowledge. As you know, uh, this is predicated on a system which was agreed last February, whereby we keep monitoring, registering, taping, uh, keeping information, and the reconstruction and the, the, the coming together of the jigsaw puzzle will come when there is an agreement at the JCPOA level. Uh, but at that time, we will have all this information, and there will not have been a gap. So I think with, with this uh, um, agreement we, we had uh, today, we are going to be able to do exactly that. So the other... You are saying, saying that you believe continuity of knowledge has been maintained? Uh, of course, we have to reconstruct it when we reconstruct it, when we, when we do the, the, the actual work. But with this, we have all the technical elements that we need to have to do that job. That's important. And your second question, of course, that is um, very important. Uh, and I think, uh, again, I've said it uh, loud and clear um, to you and uh, to the Board of Governors and through my uh, reports. Uh, these uh, issues that are outstanding require uh, to be solved. But um, as I also said, uh, there is a new government in Iran and I need to sit down with them and to discuss in a clear way 
what is their take on, this, on these issues. I could have some preliminary discussion, but uh, of course, the government has higher levels, and I got um, a very cordial invitation to return very soon to Iran to uh, have uh, this um, conversation on, uh, on how to uh, get to a solution. I had uh, certain agreements with the previous administration. I need to um, uh, recommit, I, I need them to recommit to them or to uh, endorse them or to change them, but in a way that leads us to a solution, which is, of course, part of my desire. No one could expect me uh, in 10 hours to go solve these issues and come back uh, with that. It would be unrealistic. What we need, what we need to do is to set the, um, uh, the platform which is needed uh, to, do, to do this. This is diplomatic uh, work. This may take time. It's not heroic, but is much better than any alternative. Um, Albert? CDP8, uh, Chairman President Sir, um, you said basically continuity of knowledge has been uh, uh, restored in, in principle, but, it's in, but this knowledge is in a kind of a black box, right? So uh, for how long, for how many more months can the IA safeguards team afford to have this knowledge in a black box rather than being able to, to read it? Because it doesn't seem like the JCPOA um, uh, uh, is going to be saved, you know, next month or the month after that, even if, 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 if talks were to restart tomorrow, you know? I would agree uh, that this is not a permanent solution. This cannot be a permanent solution. This has always been seen, for me at least, as a stopgap, as a measure to uh, um, allow time for diplomacy without as losing the basic uh, information and data uh, that we need. In terms of metrics, if you ask me how many months, how many days, it's difficult for me uh, to say, uh, but I don't see this as a long-term uh, prospect. That's very clear for me, that's very clear. Uh, so, thank you. I'm Stephanie Liechtenstein. I'm a freelance journalist. Um, I would like to have uh, posed to you two questions. Yes. Um, the first one says, in your report, it says that there are two, um, one broken and one damaged camera that you found yes. in the Karaj facility. Are you going to be able, according to uh, the agreement that you have struck now, to replace those cameras as well? And uh, for all the other cameras that you are going to service now, when exactly are um, your inspectors going to do that? Is it going to be now, next week, before the end of the Board of Governors meeting? Can you give us an indication of the exact timing? The answer to your first question is yes. So everything, we are going to be looking at everything, we are going to replace whatever, can, whatever may be broken or missing, yes. The second is within a few days, very soon, very soon. Thank so you. you may also have uh, an indication uh, before the end of next week whether... Um, it's been agreed that we start very soon. Okay. It's been agreed that we start very soon. Yes, Stefan. Stefan Löwenstein, Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung. Sir, um, would you assess that this agreement has been achieved uh, as a result of the pressure exerted by the IEA um, uh, by criticism and, and the report, recent reports? Uh, well, it's very difficult to say what is at, at the source of, at the origin of, of an agreement. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, first of all, we said what we had to say, and we uh, were very clear on our assessment of the, the seriousness of the situation and the need for Iran to take steps to rectify it. So that is, that is one thing. And on the other hand, there is Iran, and they have their own views, their own expectations, their own uh, readings of the situation. And they uh, decided to agree 
to our request. There is a constellation of factors around this. There is a constellation of factors. And everybody knows that when it comes to Iran, uh, there are other actors. There is the JCPOA. There are the individual uh, actors within the JCPOA. But it's not for me to say whose um, actions, words, or uh, otherwise may have you know, uh, done uh, the trick. For me, it was very clear that uh, we needed to say things in a very clear terms, and at the same time that I should um, express in all clear terms my availability to come to Tehran to discuss with them face to face and try to solve that. National TV. Uh, my question is, did you discuss about the other concern you expressed in your two reports? For example, the uh, uranium trace in the uh, this undeclared site, also about the, the, about the uranium, uranium uh, enrichment. Also, are you we, we discussed in general terms, but in line with my, um, with my um, assessment, uh, the, uh, these issues require uh, resetting, require that I sit down with a new government and that we have a clear agreement on how we are going to proceed. It is true, many in the journalistic community and uh, other commentators are saying it, a long time has passed since the agency brought uh, for the first time these issues to the attention of Iran in the first place. And some other issues were added uh, to, to this. Nothing will be um, sidelined, nothing will be hidden from, from, from my side. But I feel that there is a new administration, an administration that has clear views, has expressed clear views on these issues. So I, as Director General, need to sit down with them expose the problems uh, and, and discuss them. I am glad to note that they have agreed that this is the way to go and that we are going to have uh, meetings here in Vienna first uh, because as you may have seen in the joint statement, the uh, Vice President and Head of the AOI has decided to come to Vienna. Uh, so we are going to be continuing that. And then I will go to Tehran to have uh, meetings with the higher authorities of the country. Any other questions? Yes, Francois. Um, to what extent were discussions about whether or not to table a resolution um, uh, uh, an element uh, of your trip here? Um, are you confident now that there won't be a resolution? Are you not involved in those discussions at all? So what's, where do we stand on the resolution? Well, I think uh, there, there has been a lot of comment uh, uh, about this. Of course, I'm not part of the decision uh, that uh, um, states uh, sitting at the Board of Governors may, may, may have. Uh, of course, uh, there is an impression that in the, f you know, confronted with the situation I was presented, presenting, uh, to, the, to the board, uh, some may, may have thought or may still believe that there is a need to take action. This is why I've expressed what I've expressed clearly and today I have already issued a complimentary information uh, to the Board of Governors explaining what we have achieved now. So uh, I believe that um, seeing this on the table, members of the board will have um, new additional elements that will allow them to weigh uh, the, um, the different uh, possibilities. But of course, as DG, I should abstain from saying resolution yes, resolution no. This is not my, in my purview. But it sounds like you're saying you don't feel action is needed right now. I think we, uh, we uh, managed to rectify the most urgent issue, which was the imminent uh, loss of knowledge that we were uh, confronted with until uh, yesterday. Now we have a solution. It, this is, let, me, let me repeat, this is very important. This is going to allow us to ensure continuity of knowledge about the inventory, the production of heavy water rotors, 
bellows uh, for, for centrifuges, uh, uranium ore concentrate, very important things that would have been lost. Now, this ability to continue to count on this has been restored. And on the bigger issues, as you were referring to, uh, we have a way forward, and I, I hope to be able to be seeing the highest authorities of the country to express what I believe that must uh, uh, be done. Yes, sorry, just one final question. So you are saying that the continuity of knowledge has now been restored. But again, at least uh, from, from the media community, we never heard that this February temporary agreement has ever been formally extended. So, so how, how do you know how long is this now going to be restored? Another three months? Or how, how do you know or how do you have trust uh, that this time this is going to work out? Well, uh, my discussions with the new head of the AUI, AUI were very frank we're very, uh, I would say, uh, honest. We have our differences, but these were constructive discussions. And I believe if they have taken this decision now is because they know that if we were to go back to the same situation, the Director General of the IEA would have to say this again. So I, I believe that there is a realization that this is a, a, a situation that needs to be preserved uh, to give space for diplomacy so that, uh, as it has been the case since February, so that wider solutions can be reached. But that is not my table. That is somebody else's table. But of course, of course, the IEA is there, as always, to provide solutions. We are there to provide solutions, to provide a space where countries can meet halfway. And this is what the agency does, among other things. Thank you. Any further questions? No? Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much for, for being here. Thank you very much for, I, I suppose, we'll be seeing each other in the next few days and weeks. And I will be happy to continue the conversation as we continue getting more information. As you can see, there is a path now in front of us. There will be more meetings and hence more information for the public to analyze. And I thank you for your work. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. And apologies for having made you work until so late on a Sunday. Have a nice end of the weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>